Hey, Yost here from Crowbar Sport Fishing. Hope everyone's doing great. Uh, it is the 20th, 22nd of April, 2020 here. Uh, quarantine stuck inside with the kitties. Disney Plus coming through big time for us right now. And uh, gonna try to, I'm gonna run through on a, on a little bit more of a complicated pattern just because uh, something to do. Um, we're gonna run through and, and do a tube fly pattern uh, of, a, of sort of a prawn variation that is uh, something that I don't fish a ton, but just thought something would be cool to do here while we're stuck inside and got nothing but time. So here we go. So tying prawn patterns, um, why are we tying prawn patterns? Because uh, where we're fishing on the Squamish system, how sound has a, has a huge prawn population, especially in the spring, winter and spring, uh, spot prawns. So I don't even know how close this looks to a spot prawn, probably not that close, but um, it's just kind of a fun pattern to tie. Um, I'm, I'm tying this unweighted, so it's not a fly that has any weight to it. Um, and it's uh, it definitely an effective little steelhead pattern if you have the time and the patience to tie it. So I'm going to run through here, try to uh, try to make it as simple as possible on the tutorial. And hopefully you get something out of it. Um, if you're missing some of the materials, don't worry about it. It's, you know, if it's orange and has a couple eyes on it, it'll, it'll work. So uh, here we go. Here's some of the materials that we're going to be using today. Um, I, the whole list is on the website if you want to have a look at that. But... Um, you know, there's a few key components, but there's also some stuff that you can definitely intermingle and, and change and, and do whatever you want with this. That's part of the fun part about fly tying. So if you're missing something here or on the list on the site, don't worry about it. You can get started here with the Pro Sport Fisher tubes. It's what I've been tying on lately. They're pretty nice, and I just will prep them before I get them onto the onto the pin. Onto the pin, if I shorten them up a little bit, they're just a little bit easier to tie with, and then I can get going here and start wrapping. A little base there, base on the on the butt, and I'm, first thing we're going to do is, is tie in the tail of the prawn using Arctic Fox for this and finding some nice long strands. And I'm just trying to show you how to kind of clean it up here. When you, uh, when you pull out Arctic Fox, it's going to have always sort of a lot of under hair and um and just to clean that up because you don't really need it just a little dubbing loop here to put the hair you can tie it in flat if you want but this way uh it just kind of lets it lets it expand off the front and kind of gives the back end of the fly a little bit more body than if you just said and tied it in over but whatever works for you I had a really cheap dubbing spinner here um, it's annoying it it's not it doesn't work very good so you're gonna have to get a new one here before too long and then just kind of working over arctic fox if you haven't worked with it it's a it's a pretty common material in salmon and steelhead flies and uh, it's just really nice stuff to work with tighten that off and uh and there's sort of the, the base end of the tail just kind of covering the the tube where the hook's going to be sitting in so <clears throat> Next, we're going to get a little schlappen. This is barred, rusty, all rusty orange schlappen, and it's uh, schlappen is another material that we just use a ton of when we're tying steelhead and salmon flies. It's just the good stuff. So, kind of give you a little bit of an idea of, of how we're doing it. I clean up the feathers beforehand, and, and it just makes it easier to work with. And kind of trying to get a little bit of the the webby stuff. Um, webby fibers is always nice with schlappen. They always swim good and. Just getting that tied down, and then I'm just going to palmer it forward. There, um, you know, if you're, you can tie this pattern in obviously any different kind of color you want, pink or red or black. Um, just, just, just looks good in orange. I've always liked it as sort of the orange pattern. Couple strands of crystal flash. This is doesn't need a whole bunch, but there's a couple just there for the tail. And then this is sort of an optional thing. I'm just putting in some grizzly hackle um, on either side of the prawn fly. Um, this just gives a little bit of tail. It gives the 
hackles hackles when they swim in the water and they're like this they really swim nice so it's one of those things that just gives it a little bit of extra added motion off the back end arctic fox isn't really sort of like a super swimmy material um, it builds up bodies on flies and looks good but it's not one of those ones that really is going to give you a whole bunch of you know action in the water and that's kind of what those two hackle fibers do I got lucky with some cool eyes here. I actually bought these when I was in Denmark. Um, I've had them forever and never really used them for much. So there's a few tutorials on there of how to have, how to make cool prawn eyes. But these ones I just bought. You can definitely buy them in store. And just to make sure that they're even hanging off the back end of this thing. And, and not too far back. You know, kind of want them lined up with the hook. Next, uh, I'm going to dig through this old piece of uh, pheasant rum I got. <laughs> this is an old this is an old piece of bird i don't know how old it is but it's kind of falling apart picked out all the good stuff but just to give you an idea of, of what we're going to do and what we're going to sort of tie the i'm going to call the shell of the prawn with there's three sections of this in total so you're going to need six pheasant rump feathers you can prep them beforehand but i'll put two on either one two two on each section so here's the second one going in and Putting two rather than one just gives the fly a little bit extra body and just sort of a little bit more. It's my little girl in the background there. She's coming to check it out and ask me what's going on. Uh, this is crystal hackle. This is awesome stuff. It's not the most classic material to use, but it's uh, it's really good stuff for building flies. I love it. And then uh, this is, I'm getting a little greasy here. Got a little, this is a pea line. Um, it's just like a, it's a hoochie for salmon fishing and they're, they're, just make for cheap legs for for flies they're a little bit thicker than sort of the regular fly you know regular fly tying rubber legs you get just gonna hang those off of either side and make sure that they're even clean them up and clip them up and then you're gonna go in and uh second piece of schlapping is gonna go in after this so we're just gonna get that tied in and wrap it up tighten everything up Pulling the fibers back and just getting to lay it back. I don't want real um, rigid fibers here. I kind of want some soft stuff because I'm going to lay that pheasant rump over it. And if I have something that really sticking up, it kind of pushes the pheasant rump up. So find some schlappen that isn't you know, super, super rigid or going to push the pheasant tail up. And then first little bit of pheasant rump going in here. Second one's going to go in and this is building the... I, I don't know what you call it the second second body of the of the prawn here um taking the time to get these things to lay out properly on the top of the fly definitely make them look better they sort of sometimes want to slide one way or the other on a on a tube but if you actually take the time to sort of get them down and I'm just kind of running my finger over there just to get it uh, lay them down and look nice um, a little short on the material here, so that's why I'm just using a set of hackle pliers to wrap that crystal hackle forward. I'm going to tie it off there, and that's, that's sort of the last time I'm going to need any of that stuff. Conserving material is obviously huge if you're tying lots of flies. If you're not tying lots, then it doesn't really matter, but, you know, when you start tying lots, then you, you want. Here's a little, just a little bit of ostrich that's going into the bottom. That's just to give it a little bit of action when it swims in the water. Ostrich obviously always looks great on, on flies and, and just uh, sending it back over here. That's kind of my head. I'm leaving myself a little bit of room because I know I'm going to tie this thing off and, and, and snip the tube. You know, the, the tube you can really tie to any length and just clean it up. And then uh, this is kind of my last bit of schlapping that I'm wrapping forward. Uh, nice piece there. I always say this that the the front of the flies are always usually what get looked at the most. So taking the time here over the you know the last few few wraps that you're taking, just take your time and here we go. We're gonna find like the nicest piece of pheasant rum that I could find, and that's gonna go in first, and then make sure that it kind of lays out well. And that's just you know the eye the you know the the angler's eye is always just gonna go to the front of the fly. So that's kind of why small heads and, and you know, flies looking good up front are preferred. And then just going to snip that off, and that's uh, pretty much the fly there. I'm going to throw just a couple of uh, hitches in here just to tighten it up, and I'm all done. And, and then I'm not going not gonna to glue it quite yet. You can if you want. Um, I usually tie 
as many as I'm tying of these and then I'll go through and glue them all at the same time just easier that way and then just to clean up the front here um, obviously you're not gonna have that whole bunch of tube sticking out the front so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this uh, this fly off here and we're just gonna give it a little bit of a clean up on the front end just a snip um, a pair of cutters always a good thing to have around or razor blade this little bodkin is just going in it's just opening it up and then I'm just gonna heat it up get that tube to come back I find these with these tubes you don't need to give them much heat and they don't really they don't really melt that much so you'd have to cut them extra short and then uh, I just put a bodkin in there just to keep it open sometimes <laughs> you'll you'll melt it together but yeah that's it so there you have it prawn pattern um, <clears throat> not the quickest tie not the most simple pattern to tie but something that is uh, is fun if you got the time and feel like just sort of investing in it a little bit. You can do any type of variation on this um, you want, obviously. Um, that was just sort of my take on it. There's there's some pretty cool prawn patterns out there if you're if you're on YouTube and you're you're looking at different tires. Uh, my buddy Dimitri has a really good pattern that he ties um, that looks better than this one for sure. But um, hope you enjoyed this one. Um, if you enjoyed it, give the video a like. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Chromer Sport Fishing. Check us out. Give us a follow. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.